<laughs> y'all know what it is plant repotting for beginners my anthurium was root bound in her pot and it was time to get her up out of there got a pot two inches bigger than her old pot so that her little roots could keep flourishing unlike y'all edges <laughs> also made sure that the pot had a hole at the bottom so that the plant won't experience root rot got her some premium organic soil that drains well and added half to the pot at first had to move the soil around to make some room to let la mama through then added some extra soil leaving about an inch gap at the top for watering had to make sure to pat her in there tight like we pat our weed ladies pat 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 that soil ladies added some pebbles to the tray because my tropical girl loves her humidity added some tap water that's been sitting for days to not cause shock to her roots from watering straight out the faucet made sure i water her until the water started dripping out the bottom hole and stopped made sure to spray her with some pesticide consistent of one part neem oil water and mild dish soap to keep them bugs away and boom my girl is too blessed to be stressed and ready to be springtime fine honey follow for more plant tips her arms were cut off her legs were cut off her ears were cut off her tongue was cut off her nose was cut off three house plants that are nearly impossible to kill the first plant is snake plants and i love these they look great in any room of your house and they're so easy to take care of you rarely have to water them and they're great in low light the next plant is a ZZ plant, and these are also great. They rarely die, and they also require almost no watering, and they're great in low light as well. The third plant is a pothos, and you can overwater the crab out of these, and they will still survive. So if you are prone to giving your plants too much care, this is for you. Hey guys, welcome back to Plant Talk. How the hell do you keep these alive? Don't overthink it. Native to Southwest Africa, these plants in the wild are actually ground cover plants. So they love being dry. They love lots of bright and direct light. And if their grow points get the chance to be by a potting medium, they'll grow new roots. Make sure you have lots of light. Only water them when they've shriveled. And watch them grow. You might even get them to flower. Hope that helped. More plants you should get if you're brand new to plants. Slightly less basic edition. Number one, a neon Hartley philodendron. This is my pride and joy. It grows really long vines and the new growth is tinged pink. Number two, a marble queen pothos. This is so much prettier than a golden pothos and it grows really fast, so even if you lose a few leaves, it doesn't really matter. Number three, a raven ZZ. The new growth comes out green like the normal one, but then it darkens to this really pretty black. These are all super easy to take care of. Follow for more plant stuff. Bye! keep asking me how how is your pothos so freaking huge and i'm gonna tell you in nature pothos love to climb so if you want them to get big leaves and lots of vines you have to allow them to climb like they do in nature pothos when they get big can even get fenestrations kind of like a monstera as you can see they love to climb trees and latch on with aerial roots and i'll show you what mine look like here you can see it's like a very thick vine and these little guys are all the aerial roots that have actually grabbed onto this pole. Vines have been attached with just like that wire that's on your loaf of bread. <laughs> you want temporary attachments that hold the vine to the post. Once they grab on with their aerial roots, you'll remove that temporary attachment and allow the plant to hold on on its own. That's it. Home Depot is lying about their cacti. I'm pretty sure the flower on top. That is fake. That is so fake. Oh, the needles are real. <laughs> oh. Why is it spicy? As you know, Lowe's plants come with fungus gnats. That's why I'll do a neem oil drench on my new plant. I use dish soap, water, measuring spoons, cold press concentrated neem oil, and a container that is 32 ounces. I use one tablespoon of neem oil. Fill up the container all the way with water. Finally, one teaspoon of dish soap. I do the soap last so the mixture doesn't foam up. I shake it so all the ingredients combine well together. What I do next is just water the plant as usual. This drench will kill the fungus gnat's eggs that live in the soil. Spraying the plant will ward off the adult gnats. So I've got like a lot of plants and animals. So many that I've been able to establish a sustainable domestic ecosystem. 
My latest project has been this live planted frog tank. And with every ecosystem comes bugs. I've noticed a lot of fungus gnats. Since frogs breathe through their skin, I can't use any chemicals to kill the bugs. So I'm gonna try these sticky traps. And after two short days, these traps were full of fungus gnats. But with having a sustainable domestic ecosystem, I saw this as a great source of protein and I didn't wanna waste these bugs. So I gently picked them off with a pair of tweezers. And to complete that ecosystem, I decided to feed the bugs to my carnivorous plants that I got for my birthday. I very carefully placed two to three bugs on each of my plants. All of these plants can absolutely catch bugs by themselves, but since I just unboxed them, I wanted to give them a good source of protein to help them acclimate before I plant them at the end of the week. Make sure to like and follow to see how I turn this little shop of horrors into a fairy garden. We are officially plant parents. What do we get? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs>